Hello. So before we get started, um, I'm sorry, my eyes a little bit red. Uh, before we get started, free group session. Just wanted to remind people uh, one last time before we have it. Um, free group session uh, Thursday, uh, September 14th at 4 p.m. Eastern. Thursday, September 14th, 4 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this video when it's posted, that will be, um, you know, the, like the next day. It's the 14th. Um, so, yeah, the free group session. Hope you can join if you want, if you're interested in interacting with other people who are interested in these themes. We usually have a pretty uh, pretty great interaction with, uh, you know, with the group. If you are a member of my newsletter mailing list, you will get the Zoom link on, um, you know, on Wednesday or Thursday. And if you want to join that newsletter and have not already, you can sign up below. I'll put the newsletter link. You will get the Zoom link then for the free group session on the 14th at 4 p.m. Eastern. So today, um, we are going to do another one of these informal Cecilia, Maggie, and Tim answer your various manifesting questions. We've done a couple of these. They've been a lot of fun. Um, we've gotten a lot of good feedback in regards to, you know, people with similar issues um, really responding well to the questions that have been asked. So um, I will link below um, to Cecilia, Cecilia's video and I'll link below to Maggie's video. I will also try to link above to their, their videos that sometimes works, sometimes does not work. Um, but the links are below for both of their answers to this question. They probably, I would imagine, are going to answer this a little bit um, differently than I am, um, which is part of the fun. I'm going to actually read the entire question um, because the, this was a question that was sent to me. And um, it's rather long. And so I'm just going to respond to to it um, you know, in parts as I, as I read the whole thing to you. Um, just a side note, and I appreciated this uh, from this emailer. This emailer apologized for writing a long question. Um, sometimes long questions are necessary, um, but a lot of the time they're not. And I always appreciate it if people write a long question, if they apologize for writing a long question, because honestly, if you do want to email me with a question, um, Unless you're a client I'm I'm working with or or have worked with before, it's it's much easier for me to to respond to short questions. Just just a FYI, um, I'm much more likely to give you a good solid answer if you write a short email, as opposed to otherwise. Um, sorry, my wife uh, is just heading heading out in the rain. Um, so yeah, here is the is the question that was emailed to me or at least a significant part of it. I really like it, and I think you're going to be interested in what Cecilia and Maggie have to say about it as well. Um, sorry, I've just got the computer here, and I'm trying to look at it and make myself so you can still see me. At this point in my life, this is the, the emailer, at this point in my life, relationship-wise, it's pretty easy for me to be patient and soothe myself to be relaxed as after going through some obsessive period in romantic relationships. I realized that I can't control other people and I have no interest in controlling them either as re relationships to me should come and evolve naturally. To summarize, regarding relationships, I feel quite good about where I am at with positive expectations towards what I want. So I just want to comment on that briefly um, because you know I like to help people, if I can, with, with SP issues. Um, and I know Cecilia and Maggie do as well. And we all come at it from a very different angle than most people who speak about SP problems. Um, I think that this emailer's uh, outlook, her viewpoint there is really healthy in regards to like romantic stuff. Um, after going through some obsessive period, I, I realize that I can't control other people and have no interest in controlling them either as relationships to me should come and evolve naturally. That's really well put. 
And I completely agree with that. I mean, ideally, we don't have like an obsessive period. Almost all of us, like when we fall fall in love or fall for somebody, um, there's an infa infatuation period, right? Where everything the person does is really, we're just infatuated by them. We love it, you know? But then we quickly get over that. <laughs> Um, or not maybe quickly, but we still might be just love what our partner does or what we our SP does, but we realize they're not this exalted, perfect person that we've put on a hill. And we you you can, you know, according to Neville and certainly according to the SP community, you can control other people's thoughts about you in a way. And um, it is possible to do that short term or in some way. However, that's a crazy way to go about living and to treating people. And Neville always said that, you know, so, you know, and, and most of us can't even do that, frankly. So, you know, this email actually said, I, I realize I can't control other people and have no interest in controlling them. And relationships to me should come and evolve naturally. That is, of course, tr true and accurate and just makes sense. You know, if you're infatuated with someone, that infatuation is not going to last and the other person isn't going to want you to be infatuated with with them long term. You got to actually have a relationship. Being in a relationship is very different than starting a relationship or getting into a relationship. So I just thought that was interesting. So she said, you know, relationship wise, it, you know, I'm, I'm doing good. What troubles me now is my quote unquote career. This is this is the question. I don't dislike my job, but find it difficult to advance. I work to recruit new clients, but I find I just find it quite challenging. It's difficult because I have to go to work every day and continuously experience the feeling of I don't achieve what I want to achieve and I don't feel inspired to take any actions. This is really important because I'm sure a lot of you listening to this um, have been in situations like this and perhaps currently are. You know, every day or very often experiencing the thoughts and feelings associated with, with stuff, which is like, like I don't achieve what I want to achieve and I don't feel inspired to take any action. You feel kind of stuck. The, she continued to say, so sometimes I even feel a bit guilty of being there and not contributing at, at her work. I am expecting a permit to be approved before I can look for a new opportunity. So now I do have to stay at this job and I'd really like it to be more enjoyable also later to leave on a good note with the company. I mean, she doesn't want to, hurt the company she wants to leave on a good note but she's she feels stuck there and she she she's very aware that she's not achieving what she wants to achieve she says sorry for the long background but my question is how do we handle situations like this when it's something you have to face every day and cannot just not think about it quote unquote not think about it i mean again it's something we have to face and it's right in our face how can we handle that and, you know, she says, you know, I can't not just not think about it or wait for inspired actions with ease. I'm just not in that place as I have responsibility for this matter. In general, I do feel OK, but I'd love to feel more excited going to work and not sitting in the office feeling bored and unproductive. Just to clarify, I think relationships and career jobs are different for me because I could go on with my day without thinking too much about relationships but I go to the office eight hours a day to work five days a week. So in a way, it's a lot easier for me to, quote unquote, be relaxed and feel good about relationships. What a fantastic observation that is. Very insightful observation. You know, stuff that we want, but that we don't have to think about all the time is easier often to feel good about than things that, we're, that we seemingly do have to think about all the time. Like, being in a job you don't like five days a week, 40 hours a week or what have you. And then she continues relating to the previous questions. Uh, if you're expecting something to happen, knowing that it will, but it just takes some time. How can we best approach it while we're quote unquote waiting for it? I know it's coming, but I would just love to see it much sooner. And before this thing happens, it is true that I cannot freely explore new job opportunities. I don't feel stuck, but do experience a sense of I am not able to go further and explore because I really do require to ha it to happen first. I know some people would say just expect it to come faster, but I'm more interested about what I can do at the present moment to switch up my mood, perhaps even be inspired to do other things for the time for the moment or for the time being. 
I'm very conscious and aware of my thoughts and emotions right now, so it's almost like I can't ignore them, which is a good thing because I feel more awakened. As in the past, I probably would just wait till it happens without acknowledging any thoughts that are going through my head. So, um, really great email. Uh, a lot in there. And one thing that I really recognize is the awareness, as this emailer recognized in, in herself, of, of the situation and of her thoughts and feelings, which is a huge, uh, a huge part of all this. By being more aware, it becomes easier to shift into situations and states that we want to be in, as opposed to states we don't want to be in. Now, you know, I could answer some of these questions that she has more philosophically and esoterically, and that's totally fine. You know, there is a way uh, you could take drastic options to make something happen to change your state here. You know what I mean? You could like literally just go to a place where you just assume it's going to happen or get very silent and think like, I am God and think that throughout the day to shift your state and to shift perhaps the reality of the situation very quickly. Those are options. I'm not trying to discount those options. I'm just saying the way I relate to this question, I think the way most people relate to this question who are, who are watching this channel is on a practical matter where you're a grown, mature adult and you're in a situation that you don't really want to be in and you sit, you can't seem to find a way to feel better about it. Even with the ex the general expectation that things are going to shift, they are going to change eventually, I'm going to get out of it and on to a better situation. And there's this feeling of like, what do I do while I wait? That is something I think, again, most people watching this this video have, have been through. And I know that this is something that Maggie talks about brilliantly in many of her videos as well. So be sure to check out some of her videos about this subject. Sift through them if, if it really interests you. Um, so, you know, my short answer here is this person is already very aware of the situation and they have to continue to be aware of the situation. They have to become even more aware of a situation they already are aware of how they think and feel about it. That is grown, you know, grown up advice grown-up law of attraction advice because that's not always easy. You know, it, it's like asking yourself, when you're already aware that like you feel bad, why do I feel bad? Like, why is this happening? Why am I thinking so often that I don't achieve what I want to achieve and I don't feel inspired to take any actions? What is that about me that's doing that? What's going on there? What's the what's going on emotionally and psychologically underneath that makes me feel this way? There's a lot of conflicting stuff going on that I think if this emailer really looked at, and again, I'm not saying this is easy. This is the work. This is why we get into these principles and implement them in our lives. This is mature work. This is why I you know, work with people and try to help facilitate this awareness, these shifts in awareness that people can have to help them improve their lives. It's not, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to say an affirmation and that's it. An affirmation is a technique. This is your life. Techniques help, but they help because they make us more aware. They change our belief system by making us more aware of what's going on. How do we handle situations like this when it's something you have to face every day and you can't just not think about it or wait for inspired actions with ease as you have responsibility for this matter. Well, you kind of answered your own question in a way here. Why can't you just not think about it? Isn't there a way to not think about it in the same way that you're currently thinking about it? Ask yourself why this thought or this you know, this train of thinking along these lines, I don't achieve what I want to achieve, why that keeps coming up and why you keep on thinking that way and can't just think about it. You say you cannot think about it, but can't you go about your day? I'm not, again, I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong here. This is in, in, in a vacuum. If you step back, 
which is much easier said than done, if you step back, couldn't you go to your work with a newfound mental attitude where you don't think about the future and you just do your best and you know that things are going to change and that they're hopefully going to rapidly change and that this is a short-term thing? Is That is possible objectively, right? It's possible to shift your mindset so it's like I'm dealing with today. I know I'm at a job I don't that's not my ideal situation. I also know I'm getting out of it. You know, later on you say uh, you ex- expecting something to happen knowing it will. So there's part of you that knows this will happen, that you will shift out of this and you just have to wait, right? Which is also, of course, a belief system. You don't really have to wait for anything. You can just be present right now. Which again is much you know, doing that consistently is a practice, right? But we're not really waiting. You know, the paraphrase Genevieve Rackham, she's got that great saying I often say, like um, worrying, or you could say in this case waiting, is lack in the now. Worrying about the future, waiting for the future, is lack in the now. That's your state then. You are creating that state for yourself. It's a very different state than the state of I'm here now, I'm being present, I'm doing whatever I can to recognize the abundance all around me or the 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 love, the health, the peace all around me. I'm appreciating this job for what it is. I'm not going to disrupt anybody and I'm doing it as best as I can given my level of engagement and I'm here now. I'm abundant now and I know things are going to shift are going to shift and they're going to shift quickly. That's a very different mindset than waiting for something to change. Than being present and grateful for what's happening right now knowing something is going to change. Very very different. Waiting for something to happen in the future is lack in the now. To paraphrase Genevieve Rackham. I mean, again, later on you say, I know it's coming, but I would just love to see it much sooner. That is a state. That is a belief system you can dismantle. If you know it's coming, then you can look forward to it without the, uh, you know, worry and stress and just... Maybe it's anger, you know, that upset quality of it not being here yet. You can drop that. Or you can look at it in the very least and be like, why am I, if I know things are going to change for the better, why am I so upset about, about that, about where I am now, knowing that they're going to change? I would love to see it much sooner. Great. You would love to see it much sooner. That's wonderful. Um, but it's going to happen. So instead of feeling bad because it's not happening as soon as you would like, how can you make it so you feel okay with it happening when it happens, knowing that it's going to happen hopefully sooner than later? And again, be grateful for what's going on and for this inevitable shift if you know it's coming. If you know it's coming, it's coming. There's going to be a shift you want. Certainty is what we're looking for here. And feeling good in the present, not worrying about the future, but feeling good in the present is what we're looking for here. Feeling good in the present, experiencing you know a sense of gratefulness and peace and um, acceptance in the present is going to make your future change to your liking more quickly. It's true that I cannot freely explore new job opportunities. Okay, well then you can't. You can in your imagination. You can explore, feel imaginatively what it would be like to have that ideal job. You can do that if you want. There's all these different exercises that Neville talks about, that Maxwell Maltz talks about, that Joseph Murphy talks about, that we've explored on the podcast and elsewhere. Um, But if you're 3D, if in your 3D you feel like you can't explore, then no problem. Know that it's coming soon. And that's enough. Then you'll explore in the 3D imaginatively you can explore right now imaginatively for good and bad we're exploring all the time i 
I don't feel stuck. Very important. You don't feel stuck. A big part of you does not feel stuck. A big part of you knows it's coming. A big part of you is expecting something to happen happen, and know, knows it will. I don't feel stuck, but this is to, to use Genevieve Rackham language again. But this is the entanglement. But do experience a sense of I am not able to go further and explore. Okay, that's different. That's another part of you. So there's a part of you that's like, this is going to happen. I just have to wait and feel as good as I can while I wait. And there's another part of you that says, I am not able to go further and explore. So look at that part. Ask that part. See where it is in the body, hopefully, but you don't even have to. Ask that part, why do you think I can't go forward and explore, at least in my mind, imaginatively? Ask it. What is it scared of? What does it want from you? Why is it? Why does it feel this way? I really do require it to happen first. In your mind, you do not require it to happen first. In your mind, you can do all this stuff imaginatively right now. Um, you can work with your emotions right now. It's like so much of this law of attraction stuff. It's like, well, I want proof first. Proof comes after most of the time. And you know, a big part of you already knows it's coming. So the part that is not, does not think it's coming or is not convinced it's coming, you got to talk to the part that's I'm not able to go further and explore um, and, and, and ask it why it feels that way. And the part that says, I don't achieve what I want to achieve and I don't feel inspired to take any actions. You can talk to those parts and ask it why they feel that way. It might be the same part. I know some people would say just expect it to come faster, but I'm more, well, expect it to come faster is fine, but that's, in my opinion, a superficial thing. Expect it to come when it comes, but feel good now. Because faster is more like, that's great to imaginatively think that, but like everything happens now, 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 now. Again, my podcast, we go over this a lot. So everything is happening now psychologically, right? So just know what's going to happen and expect it to happen sooner than later. I think that's a good tact. I mean, I'm more interested in what I can do at the present moment to switch up my mood. Well, we just went over that. Stay present. That's the tough thing. Again, easier said than done. But there's so many different ways we can do this. Again, in my podcast, we explore this a lot because that's my main tact that I, I take in my own life and like sharing with people is like, how can we be more present? Because when we feel more present and more just alive and grateful and at peace with the present moment, other stuff tends to work out in our lives faster and more effectively. But we start and go back to the present moment over and over and over and over again. And then we find a lot of the time that like, we're so satisfied. Like right now, like I just feel really good responding to you, you know, in the car, or like I might be washing dishes or like I'm just on my front porch. And you just feel good in the present moment. And like, if you're honest with yourself at that, at that point, it's like, do I want anything else except this present moment when I feel good? And if we feel really good enough, we don't in that moment feel anything. We don't want anything else. See, all this stuff's imagined. So I got to wait for this. I got to do this. That's what we do. We imagine incorrectly or we imagine correctly. Like, you know, I, this is not going to happen. This is going to be hard. Or like, this is going to be easy and inevitably happening. But either way, we're imagining, right? And you can always come back to the present moment. And we get still within ourselves. We can be moving and active. But like, when we feel that peace within us, and then we're like, we're present. You have what you want. It's not external from you. I'm more interested about what I can do at the present moment to switch up my mood. Perhaps even be inspired to do other things for the for the moment or for the time being. Well, yeah. Just be more present. There's so many different ways. Again, we explore this in the podcast. My, my guide, The Joy of Not Thinking. I talk about several ways we can just switch up our mood. As I always like to say, if you move your body, the stop being serious stuff I talk about, you move your body, you switch your mood quickly. If you talk out loud to yourself for several minutes, vigorously, honestly, or talk to these parts that are saying, I'm not able to go further and explore, talk to them honestly, have a conversation with them out loud. That's going to switch up your mood. Listening to music you like, moving around, 
It's probably going to switch up your mood. Becoming very still is likely to switch up your mood. I'm very conscious aware of my thoughts and emotions right now, so it's almost like I can't ignore them. Terrific. And you say, which is a good thing because I feel more awakened. Yes. Yes. You know, awakened is a loaded term, but you feel more awake and with it, with yourself, and more capable of being present with what's there, with whatever thoughts or emotions are there. You know, because here's the thing. We want to we want to push away our, our present circumstances a lot of the time. We want to push away those seemingly negative thoughts, those negative emotions. But when we get really present, like I was just talking about, it's still always okay. That's what's crazy. So these things that we don't want to face, like the negative thoughts, the negative emotions, the negative work situations or life situations, if we look at them, they often tell us what we need to hear. But we're scared to look at them. And again, a way to look at them is just to become present with them and be like, I'm not trying to change you right now. I'm not trying to change anything. I'm just here. In the past, I'd probably just wait till it happens without acknowledging any thoughts that are going through my head. Yeah, you can do that too. But if you're aware, why not use this stuff? Why, why not try to be more present and feel better and feel more relaxed and feel more self-loving towards yourself as you go through this process in the 3D? You deserve that. You know, and as, as I always say, like, all this crazy shit, bad shit can be happening in our lives. And this is one thing that I, I really disagree with a lot of Law of Attraction teachers about. All this bad stuff can be happening in the 3D. And still, there is a piece there that has nothing to do with your 3D. Nothing to do with all your negative thoughts and emotions. It's just there. You are that right now. 